everyone, I'm here with another pre-sketched drawing for you for Doodle Days episode 5. And I just showed you the pen I'm using as a normal one. I have been the uh, Precise V5s. And here I'm just doing a little outlining. I figured um, maybe today we would try to talk about something maybe a little bit different. I haven't... Um, thought exactly of what just yet, but definitely I guess I could tell you what's been going on a little bit. Um, allergies have been really kicking my butt here lately. I guess it's getting close to the season change, so more things are releasing different pollens that affect me <laughs> that I haven't found out so much about. Uh, yeah, I have been super, super busy with things, just everyday life, and doing a little bit more crafting than I have been in the recent past, which has been awesome. Um, if you know me, I like to keep busy. Um, I like, I have to kind of always have something to do, otherwise I kind of get bored quick, um, feel guilty even, I guess. I, I'm not one to just sit around and uh, kind of, I guess, waste time is the best way I could put it. Even when I'm sick, I don't like to just sit there. I don't know if anyone else is like that. Um, when I was younger, I never had that problem. If I was sick, I had no problem just laying around doing nothing. But I guess since, you know, being a mom and everything, it's just been more things that you need to get done, and it's not going to get done unless you do it type deal. And kind of feel guilty if there are other people in your home. And right now, I still have my daughter at home, so for a little while longer before she... Uh, heads on to her secondary college, but yep, yeah, I think that's going to be a rough transition for me, <laughs> but we shall see. It's not yet. I don't want to think about it just yet. Here I'm working on another flower. I'm just doing circles and then filling them in with lines, and that actually makes a nice detail. It would probably look good for if you're going for like a beach scene for a starfish or whatnot. I think that would probably be a neat pattern to use so you can get like their little um the little pattern underneath on them or even for like octopus or squids or whatnot for the I don't know exactly what the term and technical term for them are it's like the little suction cups that are on the, the bottom of their tentacles but here I'm drawing like little flames around the outside I really like that pattern. I think that um, I've always been intrigued with the flames, um, I guess. Even on cars, I really like the old muscle cars with the flames on them. They were always something that stood out to me. So, just one of those patterns that I love drawing and I try to incorporate into anything I can. So I try not to use them too much because they are kind of like my comfort zone. And I've been trying to get out of that here with some of this, some of these more zen-like drawings. But you can see how the different patterns work together and make a cohesive drawing. I did speed the video up again. Um, I figured this way it would be much more conducive and not wasting so much time for everybody. Um, the upload times have been really crazy lately. I remember, you know, just a couple of months ago, it, the same amount, you know, the same length video taking less amount of time, and for some reason these are taking like double and triple the amount of time. I don't know if there's an influx of uploading to YouTube, or maybe it's because now I have the editing software and it's making better quality videos. Well, I think they're better quality than what they were. Sometimes the lighting's not all that great, but where I am, it's kind of what you get uh, living in the mountains, and I live in the mountains in such a way that I have, I am on the top of a mountain, but I live down kind of in a valley. The um, I'm at the top of our mountain, but there are two peaks on the side of me, and I kind of fall in the middle where it divots down into a, a valley, so if you yell, you can hear it echo all around you. It's pretty weird, but you can't tell where it's coming from. So <laughs> even if you make the sound, you know, it, it really makes the sounds distort. It was really beautiful here and everything, but um, yeah, it, 
it does have its um con its cons to it like the lighting because it's beautiful but if you don't get it at a certain peak time during the day you kind of lose the lighting and the lighting inside really doesn't benefit you that much when it comes to um art i really do think that the natural lighting is the best lighting um fluorescent lighting actually adds um discoloration to it i find at least for you know some of the drawings i do um, having the white background does help some to get more of a truer color but there is still that peak time where you want the uv rays that actually benefit your pictures and your videos and unfortunately i never get around to using that time on a regular schedule something always comes up or my phone's ringing off the hook and i've got you know, somebody who needs my attention for one thing or another, or there's housework to be done, yard work, yada, 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 you know. Same old thing we all go through. And I'm going to try to keep this background plain and simple because of the fact that there are so many individual elements here with the different, like, flower shapes that I don't want the background to be distracting and I didn't want it all solid black either because I want it to pop but I don't want it to be like blindingly like obvious I want it to have the depth and be able to pull you in and so you can see all aspects of the drawing and your eye will f like kind of flow across the page instead of everything just kind of like popping out and being overwhelmingly like yep I'm here, <laughs> you know, because stuff like that can sometimes uh, be distracting more than a benefit. And here I'm just outlining little like windows, and then I am tracing the outside of the flower. Sometimes I like doing all the exterior lines first, and then going back and doing the details, and then sometimes I just do the detail right off the bat, and then continue on but more times than not I like doing all the exterior lines and then kind of go in from there because it gives me a better idea and more time to think of what I might want to put in that area when I do a lot of these sketches I don't always plan out all the details like I'll have all the lines there but I won't have the patterns put into it yet so the patterns are coming to me as I go along Right there, you saw me fly, uh, spot a fly. I had my front door open, ajar, so um, my sister's pup could go in and out when he would like to because he was visiting. And um, yeah, we had the visitor come in and it just really bothered me that I was trying to concentrate on my drawing and he flew right in front of me. <laughs> and I I think he comes back, but I could be wrong. And here I'm just doing some more of the deal, detail work, the circles with the line strip. These are really simple, basic patterns that you could repeat over and over. And I'm sorry about sniffling again. The, uh, my allergies really are killing me. And apparently the medicine is not really helping that much anymore. <laughs> But yeah, anything that, any patterns that are basic that you can use over and over, they're more repetitive, are great for something like this. So even if they're just squiggly lines, when you put them together, they actually give more depth to the picture. And if you run out of ideas, there's always stippling the little dots, or like I did it in the little heart pattern there on that flower I just sketched. There's... Um, just your circles, triangles, I mean you could do any geometric shapes and if you don't know where to get started there's all kinds of like free things online that you can get that can help you get started but sometimes I find if you just start with a basic shape then make you know just even if you just repeat that shape over and over inside that one it gives you more areas that are smaller to work in and I find that small areas are a lot easier to fill than large ones. So even if you start with just a small piece of paper and make it like a 
index card or whatnot. That's always great because when you're done with that index card, you'll even have a piece of art to work with at the end where if you leave some room in the middle, you could use that as actually a um, mailing label. So you could write someone's name and address on it and it'll have a nice decorative border and you could just kind of tape that onto the package and it dresses the package up. I've done that in the past and really do like how those turn out and it al it's always a nice surprise for the recipient to uh, get a little bit of art in the mail too. If you know, if it's not like a crafty package that you're sending with somebody, maybe it's just a letter to say hi or a birthday card or whatnot. Uh, here I am working on the other flower that matches the one at the bottom where I did the kind of like flames on it. I'm doing that on this one as well, and I'm kind of happy with how this is turning out so far. Um, there are a few things I would probably change looking back at it now, but it is what it is, and I'm trying not to go back into the art as, like, look at it and be like, yeah, I'm not too thrilled with it, um, let me add this or that. It's like when I'm done with it, I'm done inking it, that's it. I have to hold myself to that standard to be like, okay, well, that's it. I can't add nothing else to it. I'm not going to sit and play with white out to get rid of the part I don't like. I'm not, you know, it's done. This is what it is. And I have to leave it in the book because I am very good to rip these pages out of the book if I do not like them. And here we are, episode five, my fifth sketch in. And I still haven't ripped anything out of the book. I am quite proud of myself. Like I said, I am going to stay accountable as long as I remember to let you know that, you know, if I do give and tear <laughs> a page out, I will definitely make it known and, you know, anyways, I'm proud of myself. I haven't tore anything out of the book yet. I would like to keep it completely intact, not even missing one page, so... Here's hoping that I can hold out and continue that because, like I said, I'm not completely 100% thrilled with pretty much any of them that I have done. I mean, there's always something I could pick out that I'm not particularly fond of in it, but, you know, overall, at the time, I think it was pretty good. Looking back on it, I could see where there's things that I could fix and I could make better or I can add and give it more of the uh, depth and dimension and more flair and style to it, but I think that's what makes art so individual is the fact that this is a different style than what I would normally do. So it's letting me see different things that I can achieve, not just the same old style, the same old things that I would normally do. There's more diversity in it now. And I really want to keep track of that, even if I'm not completely 100% thrilled with the outcome. It's good to see where you've been and the things you've done and see how you've developed over the time. And I'm really hoping to be able to stick with this and keep with the sketching. Even the ones that are bad, I promise I'm going to be showing. Um, because we all make mistakes. And in this one, I have made mistakes if you've been watching closely. Um, and I have actually showed how I fix them. Now, I didn't talk about that, but it was in um, one of the two flowers with the flames. I did actually extend a line and I just was coloring that area in anyway. So I didn't really fret about it or really bring to light what I was doing. But if you are interested in seeing where I messed up, that, you know, it's on one of those flowers, the second one, I believe. Um, so I believe that is the bottom left hand corner of what's on the screen right now. But um, I could be wrong. It could have been the other one. I'm not exactly sure. But it was the second one that I did. So. Yeah. If you do like this series, I would love to know. Um, they do take time. They are fun for me. They do take 
quite some time to upload. Um, and if I kept it in real time instead of speeding the drawing up, yeah, that would probably be forever. Um, I did post some in high definition and post some in regular. I don't know if they're making a difference to anybody, but if you notice a difference in some of them or uh, in the quality or whatnot, definitely let me know and I'll see what I could do to keep them either high def or make them high def or keep them low definition, the standard, whichever may be better for you. And I do have the option to speed this up even quicker. So if you'd like a shorter video yet, yeah, just let me know because I can do that as well. I just figured this speed right now would be a good one just to see, you know. I mean, I could definitely go shorter. I have the option of uh, actually quite a few more, but I didn't want to speed it up too quick. I figured this would be suitable, but if it is definitely too long for you, let me know. Um, as for going slower to do a completely real-time video, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with the upload rates for how long it does take. And now that I am e editing some videos, um, I'm not going to edit every video I put up on YouTube, but these ones I'm definitely going to edit because I sketch them, I speed them up, and then oh, here's the drawing, guys. Sorry, got to cut short.